Welcome back environmental science students. This is Mr. Hollins and I'm here to address some of the homework questions that I gave you in number 10 and 11. Uh, and number 10 talks about nutrient cycling. On page 309 they talk about soil organisms. And soil organisms which are usually hidden underground are remarkably numerous. Organisms that colonize the soil ecosystem include plant roots, insects such as termites and ants, earthworms, moles, snakes and groundhogs. Most numerous in soil are bacteria, which number in the hundreds of millions per gram of soil. Other microorganisms that are abundant in soil ecosystems include fungi, algae, microscopic worms such as nematodes and protozoa. In a balanced ecosystem, the relationship between soil and the organisms that live in or on it ensures soil fertility. So soil organisms provide several essential ecosystem services such as maintaining soil fertility, preventing soil erosion, breaking down toxic materials, and cleansing water. The definition on page 310 that says nutrient cycling is the pathway of various nutrient minerals or elements from the environment through organisms and back to the environment. So essential nutrient minerals such as nitrogen and phosphorus are cycled from the soil to organisms and back to the soil again. Decomposition another ecosystem service is part of nutrient cycling. Bacteria and fungi decompose plant and animal detritus and waste, transforming large organic molecules into small or inorganic molecules including carbon dioxide, water, and nutrient minerals. The nutrient minerals are all released into the soil to be reused. So let's take a look at the question here. Question number 10 says, what is nutrient cycling and why is it so vital for the plants, animals, and microorganisms that live on land? Are you ready? Nutrient cycling is the pathway of various nutrient materials or elements from the environment through organisms and back to the environment. Plants, animals, and microorganisms that live on the land utilize the essential nutrient minerals in the soil. Meanwhile, bacteria and fungi in the soil decompose plant and animal detritus and wastes so that minerals can be released back into the soil where they can be reused. This is a suitable response for your homework. Additionally, you'll be asked a question like number seven, why should environmentally sustainable societies protect their soil resources? On page 310, they talk about soil problems and conservation. Soil is as important as air and water for human survival, yet humans disrupt soil systems that would be balanced in nature. We have had a harmful impact on soil resources worldwide, particularly by intensifying agricultural use. These human activities often cause or exacerbate soil problems such as erosion, mineral depletion, and soil pollution all of which occur worldwide. Such activities do not promote sustainable soil use. Soil used in a sustainable way renews itself by natural processes year after year. So here on page 310 it says sustainable soil use, the definition being the wise use of soil resources without a reduction in the amount of fertility of soil so it is productive for future generations. So now let's look at that question again. Here it is. Why should environmentally sustainable societies protect their soil resources? And I've given you environmentally sustainable societies should protect their soil resources because only 11% of the world's soil is currently suitable for agriculture. So not all of it is able to be planted. Additionally, also soil restoration is costly and time consuming. So to ruin the soil with plans of putting it back is really not a very efficient idea. So there you have a couple of sample responses for some of the types of questions, definitely for your homework, but also that you may see on the written exam when we end this chapter. This is Mr. Holland signing off saying good luck and see you soon.